Well, this is Ringley Locks. We're now on the far side of Locks and there's quite a lot here surviving. Now, Ringley Locks is in pretty poor condition, the stonework missing and the bottom lock's completely buried. However, when we've been clearing this area, there's an awful lot that's left. There's a bit of this fencing that's probably dated from the 50s, made out of old sleepers. Um, now, as you can see along here, there's this old stonework that, as you can see, it curves away nice, nice and neatly uh, and it vanishes over here. Now this bit here, where these tree stumps are and where this earthy bank is, underneath there is the bywash overflow. So when the water in the canal gets too high, rather than flowing over the gates, which damaged them, it flowed around the side, went into the middle pound, and then if the middle pound was too full, it would flow on the bottom lock bywash into the bottom canal and flow further down. Because the canal was only fed from the top on the berry arm, the water came all the way down. Unfortunately, you can't see much because the banking has rather given up over the years. It was filled in the 1950s. But there's still some good signs of stuff that's here. An interesting thing that has survived, although it's very hard to see, is this bollard here. Bollard, not necessarily interesting on its own, but this is one of only two bollards that are known to have survived on the canal. When the canal was abandoned, and this is a story that I've been told by a member who remembers it, when the canal was abandoned and scrap metal prices were still high, it was post-war Britain, some guy came along and cut off every single bollard, every single mooring ring, cracked off every single cast iron uh, winch and sold them for scrap. Must have made an absolute fortune. Unfortunately, it means that every mooring wing we now need to replace and the mooring bollards need to be replaced as well. There's what's left of one over on the far side that's been exposed during the towpath works. Speaking of the towpath works, as you can see, this towpath is beautiful it's much nicer than it was before it's less muddy uh much more accessible for everyone especially bikes because it's a uh, standard surface for bikeways so that's always a good thing and it's much better to walk on and we've noticed loads more people have been walking along it and enjoying walking on the canal because you no longer need your wellies to actually enjoy a walk on the canal uh down here we had a bit of a dig so over there it's pretty difficult to see now because so much has been infilled, but there used to be a lock house stood here. All the canals, um, all the locks on the canal uh, had a lock keeper. The boats actually didn't operate the locks like they do nowadays. They were operated by a lock keeper and every single lock keeper lived along the canal. Now this lock house was sadly demolished and the rubble is in the uh, lock, similar to knob end locks where the lock house, one wall survives, but that's all. Uh, and the actual bywash flowed behind it as you can imagine, this would be a beautiful area for a lock house. It's nice, it's rural, right by a canal. It would be absolutely wonderful. The top lock is the most obvious lock. However, we can have a look at where the middle pound uh, should be and where the bottom lock should be and see what's there so you can get an idea of what this site should look like. So this site here where I'm stood on is right above the bywash. We had a bit of a dig down in here. Uh, we're not sure what this piece of stone is. It could have either been a cover stone or possibly a floor slab from the lock house because they were stone flagged floors. Now the bywash is actually quite deep so this is why we gave up on the work. We can find the remains of a wall. I don't know if you can see that too well here but it's just full of rubble and it's about I would say about four feet down from here. So there was no point digging too far down. Ran the ditch, the lock has a 10 foot fall on it. So that's how deep um, this would go because it needed to get to the middle pound, which is very well buried. Uh, so you can see a few remains of uh, the industrial parts. There's a big old bit of stone there, lots of brickwork, lots of dress stone flags. This uh, land drain, which would have fed into the biowash and then fed into the canal, they were very, conservative with water uh, and down here roughly would be where the middle pound was and it was huge the middle pound um, it's very hard to see the lock is right there right in front of us that's the first lock this wall you can see here which has been pushed away over the years by all these trees that's where the bywash runs so we think this is the location of the lock house where this nice flat bit is once again, it's, it's difficult to tell because the land has been infilled and all traces of where the building was is virtually gone. But this is where we think the lock house would have stood. It was a two up, two down building. 
uh, quite small, but really nice little buildings. They used to look after their workers and a whole family used to live in there and that'd be the lock keeper who would be working 24 hours every single day to clear the canal. And you can see this wall extends all the way down there, which would be where the middle pound is. So we can take a look at roughly where we can find the middle pound. You can't really see it and we'll see just how big the site actually is. Following on from where the lockhouse was, roughly going over it, this is still the bywash, as you can see by all of the stone. It was quite big, it had to flow past the lock, and the locks on this canal were pretty substantial, I believe 68 feet long. Uh, it's lovely and treacherous around here. And this area where I'm stood now is probably where the bywash left. Um, you cannot actually see anything, unfortunately. There's self-set trees that have grown up and have died, and more self-set trees have grown up, and it just looks like a jungle. Anyone who doesn't know about the, that a canal used to be here could not tell that a canal used to be here. So you can understand why a lot of people who walk through here say to us, I didn't know a canal was here. You can't tell. We've got all of our volunteers currently working hard trying to expose sections of the canal. Though the actual pound will be, from where we're stood, about 10 feet down. The actual land does slope, so we're about, I'd say four feet lower than where we are now. So it's still probably another eight to 10 feet before we'd hit stonework. And then the actual pound was quite deep itself, maybe five or six feet. A lot of earth has been tipped in here. And it's also paper pulp from the old mill. It was them who filled it in in the first place, Fletcher's paper mill. So when we've dug up here before, we found paper pulp, which is the worst stuff to dig through because it's the stickiest, nastiest, smelliest stuff you can imagine, and it's just the worst. Unfortunately, that's what it's filled in, so that's what we've got to dig out. But we can take a look at where we've exposed a little bit of the second lock, where we think it is, but you really can't see much, but it's worth having a look at anyway because it's one of the few signs that there used to be a canal here. But we've got to go back that way. <laughs> So, we're now stood over the middle pound. For reference of where we were last time, those trees right behind me is where we were, but you can't get to them through here, so you had to go the long way around. It's not very accessible, it's pretty boggy. Now, this whole area here that you can see is the middle pound, and it stretches over that way a bit. You can see how big it was. It actually was a pretty substantial pound, because it had to hold a number of boats, as well as feed locks, so it was pretty big. Now, where I'm stood right now, this is where the entrance to the second lock would start. The pound's underneath us. Now, this great big swimming pool of horrors over here is the entrance to the second bywash. I'd love to show you what it looks like, but Mother Nature decided we're not allowed, so you get to see this. The entrance to the bywash is where the fencing is right here, and it runs in a tunnel. This actually is a tunnel rather than an open channel like the last one, underneath here. Now, lock number two starts just over there, where these trees are, where this water's flowing through. That's where lock number two is, but it is a good, oh, four feet down to the start of the lock and then another 10 feet in the lock. You can see just how much has been buried here. Now, this was all hand dug out a while ago. We've got photos. Uh, as she can see, you can't see anything else now. But what's amazing is the fact that this all holds water enough for this pretty substantial stream to be running through. This stream comes all the way from up there and actually used to feed into the canal. It used to just go into a drain, go into the canal, fed the water. Like I said, they're quite clever with their water management. Now it just flows straight through here and makes it absolutely impossible to get through here. Um, we had a dig around here not too long ago because as you can see, these pretty old hand forged fences are still here and those are probably as old as the canal themselves, maybe a bit younger, um, but they've been buried for years, so we exposed those and had a dig, and the stonework's still under here, but you can't see it because it's all flooded. Um, but yeah, that's the site of the locks. There is absolutely nothing interesting over there because it's completely buried. Thank you, 1950s mill owners for that. And further on from that is a bridge, which is also completely buried and infilled, and we can't say anything. Thank you, 1950s uh, mill owners, for that. And then after that, it runs, you can see where it's filled in. 
we want to get this all exposed. Uh, we can clear all this off and actually show the top of the middle pound, the top lock and the bottom lock, and hopefully expose a lot of it. But it's going to be a big job. Something like the Big Dig Part 3, maybe. I'd like to call it that, wouldn't I? But yeah, this is where we're working at the moment. Now I've got to figure out how to get over this trench without getting wet again. How do I get it? <laughs> yeah. oh, dear. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much for watching this video. I must apologise for the lack of videos that have been this year. I'm going to be on the ball, as you can see, got this much better video. I need to thank Tom Jeffs for coming down and filming during the most recent work party. And I hope everybody has a very Merry Christmas. And from all of us at the Canal Society, we hope you have a wonderful and very happy New Year. We've got plenty planned into 2019, so stick with us. We've got a lot of stuff that is going to be coming your way. Stay tuned. If you want to get involved with the Canal Society, I've left links in the description. If you want to join the Canal Society or if you want to help out at the work parties, I've left an email if you want to get in touch with our work party officer. I hope you all enjoyed, and once again, have a very Merry Christmas and an excellent New Year.